This lesson opens the door for you to the idea of a system of ideas that shapes the content of the news and information media. Everything from the internet and all of its ways of saying things to more traditional media such as television, newspapers, magazines, and radio. This is where moral ideas confront the competing culture of entertainment. My goal as we begin the course is to place ethical thinking at the center of the creation of media content and then to give you some tools to help you prepare for media work or to help you consume media content thoughtfully. The objectives for the lesson are to be able to discuss ethical thinking and its place in communication, to identify an ethical dilemma, which is the starting point for ethical analysis, to know and use the steps needed to resolve dilemmas, and to describe the sources of key ethics ideas. I want you to realize how critical careful analysis is to the resolution of dilemmas. Okay, let's move on. The brain does most of the work of regulating our activity, sounding the alarm when there is danger, supporting our actions when there is no threat, managing emotions at other times. Though the brain is not a foolproof governor of our efforts, it takes care of most of us rather well most of the time. The brain serves as well as it does, in part, because of memory, or those experiences encoded beneath our skulls. We know from parenting, life experiences, school, and relating to others about the boundaries between moral and immoral actions. We say we have a moral sense or a conscience. We call ourselves moral agents. At any age, we have been programmed to some extent to make moral decisions. And yes, we vary across a wide spectrum in how we act on our moral memory. Does a group of people formed into a corporation, university, parent-teacher group or television station newsroom have a moral conscience equivalent to the individual's morality. I argue that groups need a regulator like the individual's brain to guide moral behavior. For some groups, commitment to an ethical system provides the moral regulation the group needs. But our ways of constructing ethical systems vary widely. We need to ask what ideas support a particular system. For example, are the ethics behind hiring and dismissing employees based firmly in moral thinking, or are they grounded primarily in the immediate needs of the corporation? Ethics can be understood as the application of moral ideas to practical matters, such as work, relationships, teaching, diagnosing a person's illness, or advising on legal problems. This course addresses the role of ethics in a range of communication practices. It may help as you assess examples of a communicator's good or bad deeds to keep the idea of the regulation mechanism in mind. In some cases, ethics allows us to judge past actions of a company or of its employee. In other cases, ethics will guide those who want to prescribe future actions. We call both applications normative ethics. Metaethics refers to the study and appraisal of ethical systems. Before you move on, think about the difference between law and ethics. Law is based on legislative mandates administered by government agencies as diverse as police departments, school districts, and courts. Laws set limits for individual and group actions and prescribe penalties and punishments. Legal principles are fleshed out in court opinions stated and revised over numerous cases. Media law, for example, has a fairly clear line between communication that damages one's reputation, libel, and for which a person might receive monetary damages, and communication we might call libel safe. But as you move through this course, you will see many examples of conduct that is libel safe, but could be judged wrong conduct or unethical or immoral. Lawmakers follow their ideas of ethical conduct, yet while the laws they pass may conform to some idea of morality 
most folks support, those laws often yield quite different moral results. I'm sure you can list at least a few laws that had popular support when they were passed, but would now be condemned as immoral. Law will intrude into this course from time to time, but the focus will be on moral thinking rather than legal theory or precedence. Rather than depending on the courts for answers, those who communicate to the public ethically have to find the answers in their ability to think through difficult problems. This course develops a picture of communication ethics in two steps. The first step is analysis of ethical dilemmas, those moments when a journalist, public information officer, or other communicator faces a hard decision, a decision that often provokes intense discussion and wearying soul-searching. The second step requires drawing from those dilemmas to reach a higher level of knowledge about communication ethics, combining what has been learned from many cases in order to describe a coherent system of ethics. The raw material of ethics study is the moment when a communicator realizes that he or she has at least two choices, and each of those choices has a moral dimension. That's a dilemma a situation that forces a difficult choice. Dilemma moments provide wonderful windows into the moral compass of individuals and groups. On the surface, there may be panic, worry, utter confusion. The ultimate decision will show how moral experience is applied to the challenge at hand. Now, don't confuse ethical dilemmas with the dilemmas that come up every few minutes of the day. Should I take my coffee break now? or wait until Jim is back. It's not a real moral issue there, is there? This is the process for resolving a dilemma. First, recognize that you face a decision that leaves you with two or more choices. Then, identify the possible courses of action and explain why each choice raises a moral issue. Now, analyze each choice, taking into account details of the case ethical ideals, obligations, and possible outcomes. Make your decision and justify it in moral terms. Finally, outline the consequences that may follow the choice you have made. Here's why I emphasize attention to the facts or details of a situation. You want to collect all the details related to the decision you face. Avoid making a decision when critical facts aren't yet known. In some cases, one of the case details may be the history of dealing with that particular issue. Take into account the nature of the medium or platform where the content appears. A news website that collects reports from other sites may not scrutinize content for ethical violations as carefully as a traditional newspaper website might. Incidentally, notice that I use the word medium to refer to a single communication source. Media is the plural form of medium and refers to more than one source of communication content. I try to use the words this way, though we all know that in conversation the two are often confused. Platform is a word that emerged in this era of changing technology and refers usually to a single communication medium. Ethical ideals are goals drawn from centuries of inquiry into what constitutes virtue excellence or goodness. Justice, honesty, and forgiveness are but three ideals that support virtuous actions. Make a list of ideals that you can add to as you move through the course. An obligation requires a moral justification. In ethics discussions, loyalty is sometimes invoked as a moral obligation. To some writers, loyalty implies a blind obedience, while an obligation begins because of a defensible moral commitment. People in media love to imagine the dire consequences of their acts. If I report this story, someone might be hurt. I once met an editor who declared that she did not want any of her reporters to think about consequences because it would weaken their resolve to seek and publish the truth. I think outcomes have to be considered in working out a dilemma but don't obsess about unknown possible outcomes. It is more important to identify how a decision once made 
affects those involved. After a decision has been made, become a serious student of how events play out. By working through dilemmas, you will learn about the ideas that shape work and communication. In the next lesson, I'll walk you through a case that involved many dilemmas for the journalists on our newspaper staff.